my ideas come from how I see my life and what goes on around me. Many years ago, this, um, this collector said to me, you're a good artist, but to be great, you have to have your heart really broken. And I went, <laughs> I understand what he's talking about now. I had a very big emotional incident in my life that really opened the door to, to like my inner self. So really discovering my voice was breaking up with my husband and just the pain. This touching something so dark and so deep, just losing myself in that and, and you know, rebuilding and expressing that, that pain um, through my work was, you know, curative. It was um, a, a stream of anger that felt so good to express. And I, I just found my voice through that. I, in my loneliness, have surrounded myself with um, a lot of animals, kind of discovered, rediscovered, because as a child I was, um, I had this relationship with animals and I've rediscovered it as an adult and it's an anthropomorphic vision but when you're really close to animals it's amazing how much um, humanness you see in the animals. I mean we are animals so it makes sense. And I just think it's so amazing to have these pigs and chickens who um, when allowed to express their um, personalities are so incredibly diverse, each chicken and each pig. I find that animals have an inner space that fascinates me and not all humans have an inner space that fascinates me. It's very strange, I feel uh, hurt from people that I don't feel from animals. Like if an animal bites me, I say, okay, she was feeling really stressed out, she was feeling hungry, she was feeling anxious because of, of a situation that she's had before she came to me. I mean, I, I am very understanding with animals and very critical of people. <laughs> so that makes sense, right? Look at that face, have you ever? <laughs> it's really a joy to have these animals in my life and um, I would never ever eat a pig, ever. The bulk of my work is ceramics, um, living here in the country and being very connected to the earth. I'm not surprised that ceramics has found me, is what I feel. It just makes sense. For the ceramic, it just flows and it can be so fun. It can really be fun. The uh, lack of control is fascinating and exciting that the elements are so... Earth, wind, fire is so much a part of the medium. When I, when I open the kiln, I never know what's going to come out. It's, it's part of the, the thrill of working with ceramics. It can also be when you open the kiln, your heart can drop. <laughs> Unless I'm working, I go a little nutty. And I am compelled to work all the time because I have a cabinet full of ideas and a necessity to empty that cabinet all the time because if I can't do that I feel very overloaded and anxious and it's funny because now pretty much that's all I do. I, I barely go out. <laughs> yep. Okay. The most inspiring thing I, I can do is to walk in a forest. This is where I am finding my inspiration at this point.
is where trees are the forests are where beasts dwell the forest is where fantasy begins I've been asked before if the women in my work are self-portraits and I guess in some sense Everything I, I do is me in some sense because it filters through me. There are symbols and metaphors that keep occurring. Certain emotions that I have will give me visualizations. The embracing of beast men by the women in my work is certainly an expression of my sensation of being with the opposite sex. <laughs> I do feel men are bestial and I feel like they just, they can't help themselves. And that is something so interesting in caring for all these animals. I see it in the animals. There's a point when you're making love where it's all sweet and it's very interactive and all of a sudden the guy goes off on some, you know, bye-bye land, you know? He's off onto his own orgasm. And I mean, that's the goat. <laughs> The sexuality in my work is something I'm trying to figure out because I can't figure it out. <laughs> I am not a sexual person. I'm a wannabe. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I don't understand it. I just really don't understand. I wish I did. I mean, the thought of being in an embrace with a man is very enticing, but everything that you have to do and the work you have to do to get there, I, I, I just don't understand it. I don't understand how people can be intimate. I don't think I can give that of myself right now. And hopefully it's just a time of healing as opposed to something that I've cut off forever. I don't feel uh, lonely or isolated living in the country. I used to feel very lonely when I was with a man. When I was married, I felt very, very lonely. And right now, I, I, I don't know what the word lonely means. I'm alone, but I don't, I'm not lonely. It's very different. It's a lifetime journey. I know that I should be worried about getting older, but I find it such a fascinating place where I am right now. And this morning I woke up and I thought, this is the beginning of the decline. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? And it is, but I mean, people as they decline um, have a certain consciousness that 
you know, youth just doesn't offer. And it's, it's so exciting. I mean, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm really having fun.